Well, good morning, brothers and sisters of the hook and the book. A lot of you have been wondering what Salty Kayak and Big John have been up to these last couple of months and almost year, a couple of years maybe. Well, we've been staying busy. Big John's been doing some fishing, but mostly yard work, relaxing with his sweet wife. I've been kind of busy doing little projects, little hobbies on a scroll saw. This is one. And I'll tell you some other things that I've been doing lately. Do a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff for the church. Bought myself a table saw. Bought myself a scroll saw. It's a Wren scroll saw. I'll show you what I do with it here in just a minute. I gotta cut this up a little bit. Make it down to size to wear a mask all the time because of wood dust I like getting that wood dust in your lungs these sleds I got two sleds for my table saw makes it a lot easier to cross cut let me take you over here to the uh, scroll saw be right back there we go now I am using crown tooth saw blades this is the seven teeth per inch saw blades they're pretty good for quick but good work pretty accurate when I really want to do the fine work I use this crown tooth scroll saw number fives or number threes and fives that have 16 teeth per inch that's when you do the real fine turning stuff but I'll show you the results after I get done. I won't bore you with all the uh, cutting and all the vibrations. Roll saw, you got to be very accurate and patient. This is my own design because I've got a dachshund and I love dachshunds but I might sell some of these to the people that have dachshunds, have had dachshunds and love this cute little dog. I'm sure I'll speed you through this. I'm sure I'll speed you through this so you don't have to watch every little cut and every little movement. the dog out 
let me show you how I do the eyes now that's pretty cool how I do the eyes I've got this countersink it it's it's this is actually the smaller bit I got larger ones for the uh, for the boy and the girl I got a girl too everything you do is scroll sawing you have to do slowly and patiently because after you've done all this work you don't want to break it or even halfway through you don't want to break it flip it over because it's got two sides okay now you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a, drill a little hole in there and make the ear and dig a smile. I'm going to cut that smile in there and a little bit of a crease on the nose. I always give value added from any of my projects. When somebody buys one, they're going to get value added. All right, this project with the boy with his dachshund is about half done. This is my belt sander from Vivor, my Vivor belt sander. Now you see how tightly these fit together? It's one piece of wood. That's why I love this kind of hobby. It's really cool. Shows some skill. But that's how it fits together. Now I'm going to sand everything down nice and smooth. Get all the rough edges off. I'll show it to you after I'm done. All right. As a side note, I want to show you something. These are the little holes that I drilled so that I could put this very fine blade in and cut out the ear. But you see those little holes right there? That kind of makes it look ugly. So what you do is you take some of your sawdust, you save your sawdust from the project. And there's a lot of sawdust from many projects. And then you take your glue, a little drop of glue, and then you mix a bunch of this sawdust in. And then you just get it on the tip, put it in there, make it disappear. On both sides, this is two sides. Just, just a tip for y'all. All right, so we have moved into the house now and left the scroll saw outside in this 90, 88 degree weather. Not, well, not quite 90, but it's about 90% humidity. And I've done a little work on my dachshund here to help clean him up a little bit. See how that works? That's one piece of wood. Isn't that cool? One piece of wood. And here's some of the other things that I've made over the last couple months. This is my girl kneeling and praying and this is one of my add-on value <laughs> sculptures in that blood of christ cleanses us from all sins that's what the white heart is all about but if you take the white heart out you still have christ but you're out of balance see that that's why you need to get back in balance Yep, and they just drop in there, and there she is, good to go again. Keep on praying. And this is another one I'm going to send to my stepmother. I made this today. She's 98 years old, I believe, and she is in like a um, retirement home, of course. They're taking good care of her. Uh, we love her a lot. I'm going to send that to her. And this is my pom-pom girl here. And a lady from church has a, a granddaughter that's a cheerleader. So that's my cheerleader. I made that a couple days ago. And this is a cross and white heart. And this is one of my dachshunds. It's Biscuit. Say hey, Biscuit. Hey, Biscuit. And let's walk over here. Made this a while ago. This is kind of cool. This is one of my value added kind of sculptures. There we go. 
in that, you know, I've, I put them on a base so that because they're wood, they break if you knock them over. So in order, order not to knock them over so much, I made a base for them. But you see that? That's one piece of wood. Isn't that cool? That'd be good for newlyweds or old weds, oldie weds. And this is something I'm going to give to my kids for Christmas. L-O-V-E. And I'm going to put a picture of the of the the husband and wife, my son and daughter-in-law, and their kids. Isn't that cool? And these are some random scrolls. Got a bunch of these, and I'm giving them away at a coffee house. And another little project I got going is, you see this? It's a cement that I've painted. And I've got a lady who wants a couple of these um, that I'm going to give to her, and she's going to paint and make sunflowers out of them. Anyway, that's just some of the things that's going on here at Salty Kayak's house. All right, this is the next day, and this is one of the projects that I did this morning. I also made had to uh, cook myself some more coffee because I was getting low on coffee, and I, uh, I roast my own coffee, and I'll show you that in the next clip. But this is my, um, actually right here, that's Aggie, Agatha, and she is into fencing in high school. And so I made her a fencing cutout. I thought that was pretty cool. This is tough to do, my friend. This is tough to do. It, because it's wood and it can break easily. And I made it a little base for her. Part of your time, a lot of your time is making the bases. I make bases for all my uh, figures, my figurines, so that people can put them up on shelves and stuff. Isn't that cool? That's the coolest, man. Yes, this is another not so much hobby, but I roast my own coffee. Yeah, I've been drinking coffee for the last 60 some years. Actually, 65 years. <clears throat> Since I was uh, growing up in high school up in northern Ontario. That coffee out on the ice to stay warm. Yep. When I cook my coffee, when I roast my coffee, I usually do about 400 grams to 200 grams at a time. So, yeah, I also, Salty Kayak also roasts his own coffee. Yeah. All right, it's starting to change color. As you can see, it's getting brown. I'm around the 446 approximately degrees Fahrenheit. I start with 200 grams, and I'd like to end with about 165 grams. Calculate that out to about 15, somewhere around 15% moisture loss. That's my sweet spot. All right, I get back to you. We'll see the uh, first crack starts. Should be any minute now, actually. All right, I've heard a few of the first cracks. And the time is almost eight minutes is when it's first starting to... You hear that? It almost sounds like popcorn. You may not be able to hear it from the sound of the motor running. But that's a sign you're in the developmental stage. And the coffee the moisture is coming out of the coffee bean and it's really starting to roast all the way through. Mmm, the smell is good. I built all this myself. 
and I roast my coffee in one of our spare bedrooms and I vent it to the outside. I kind of like my roast to be approaching darker. I got like a richer flavor. 443 degrees approximately. Now that's in the base here. Some people put the probes down and, and the probe will test right in the middle there. Which is the best way to do it. But I know my what my flavor is, my tongue. Alright. I'll get back to you when it's done. Alright, let me explain it to you here. This button, you push this button, that's the air. I want the air to go slower. The next button is the heat. If I want to turn the heat up or down. Uh, I don't pay any attention to the time because I have my own timer over here. But as the beam loses moisture, you need to turn your air down because it jumps. It starts to jump. You don't want anything to work into the top up here. That's where all the chaff goes. And you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see a little bit of the chaff rising. I'm just about to turn it off. And let it cool down. Now let, I put it in a container that cools down for about three days. The vessel is still developing, it's outgassing the carbon dioxide and it adds a little bit more to the flavor, that's all. Alright, I'll get back to you later. Alright, I started at 201. I'm ending at 169.5, that's what it was, so 169 point, I think at 169.9, 169.9. So, to calculate percentage of loss percentage of moisture loss so 201 minus 169.9 equals 31.1 then you go divided by 201 the original amount it equals 200 no no that's not right try it again All clear 201 minus 169.9 equals divided by 201 equals 15.4 see that 15.5 actually and that's perfect for me 15.5 so this now I need to put it in a container let it gas out, let it cool down, and I'm going to do another 200 grams. All right. All right, boys and girls, we're going to wrap this video up. This is where I put the uh, coffee beans in. Save for about three days so they can degas, but just so that I can have some fresh coffee, I'll pour some in here grind it up take a second bought these off of ebay or ebay oh, bought these uh, containers off of amazon see that nice freshly ground freshly roasted coffee you darn right you darn tootin I like fig newton yep take some put it in here you might think it's kind of a hassle but you know what this is fresh coffee you can't get any better coffee than this in there close the lid make sure there's water in here 
by the way that line right there on your red cups 10 ounces just exactly what I need all right the next video I'm going to be showing you two more projects that I've been doing how to make cement flowers and do some target shooting backyard target shooting with high-powered pellet guns I've got a couple that's gonna be fun all right we'll see you guys later